Good morning, everybody. So a um, couple of great things I want to share with you. Um, I can't tell you how God's working in my life. Uh, I, I really just, it's, it, it's blowing my mind. Um, today at church, um, I signed up for leadership classes. I start this week. Um, I think it's a six week or 12 week course. And then I will be assigned with my own group to, to help teach the Bible to. And um, so that starts next week. Then um, I signed up for choir. Then I signed up for, um, there's another group, Heart to Heart or something like that for older people. Um, they have luncheons, they do movie night. Uh, so I signed up for that. So that's a good way that I'll get to meet people. And uh, while I was waiting for church to start today, I was led to open to the book of James. And Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Um, this, this, this whole book, it explains everything that I have just experienced. I saw uh, another pastor put something out today about um, how, to deal with, with, how to deal when people criticize you or slander you. Um, it's very funny because they are the ones that have slandered me. They are the ones that have slandered me. And um, I would like to see the same pastor put out something about um, what should people do when pastors think they're God and they attack you. I would like to, I would like to hear him put something out about that. So um, this is what I'm talking about with these narcs. They will do the attacking, and then when the victim speaks out, the victim is made to be the one who is in the wrong, and the victim is made to be the one who is doing the slandering and the attacking. God help us all. We are most assuredly in the end times. But I'm going to read this book of James to everybody so that you can see exactly. Hey, and listen, uh, I don't know the book of James from the book of anything else in the Bible. This is where I was led to this morning, sitting in church, waiting for church to begin and it explains everything that it, that I've gone through with these pastors no joke so I'm going to start uh, w with the first chapter it's very short um, chapter 1 verse 1 and I'm just going to read it right through so it says James a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations and greetings you notice they separated this servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ separated it. Well, these these uh, so-called pastors out here are, are saying Jesus is all there is. They're not even considering Father God. This is how blasphemous they are. They're not even considering Father God. Okay, so let me read that again from James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and my sisters, whatever you face, trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may mature and complete, not lacking anything. And here's um, what they are all missing. The ones who are supposed to be in the know, you see, this is something that I never let slip by me, which I always tell you guys, never let anything slip by you. Because even the hard times are blessings. It is through the pain that we grow. You, you never grow when you're sitting in your nice little comfy seat, thinking that you're on the top of the mountain constantly, and you're the one in God's favor. And you're the only one in God's favor. And um, if there are any others like you, they're very, very few. And you're all sitting on the top of the mountain and you look down on everybody else. Well, what's going to happen? God's going to put you in the valley to let you understand you're not any more special than anybody else. And it is in those times when you're in the valley that you are being blessed beyond belief. You may be in massive amounts of pain. It is through the pain that we grow. And the old saying, no pain, no gain, is absolutely the truth. Okay? It is through the pain that we are blessed the most. That is when transformation takes place. 
So while this other one wants to talk about what to do when you're being slandered, they should all get together and have a pastor's conference on how to treat people with dignity and respect, how to be Christ-like. That should be something that they each put a video out about, how to be Christ-like. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. And if God does not find fault in every single one of us who are sinners, then how do these pastors believe by any stretch of the imagination that they are better than anyone else out here and that they sit in a judgment seat? Well, only Satan allows people to believe that. You've got the blinders over their eyes. Do you understand? God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life and the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen, 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 amen. As you can see, I'm consistently faced with trials. I'm consistently being attacked. And I'm consistently growing deeper in the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. God's word is truth. God's word is absolute truth. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. God does not tempt anyone. Any temptation comes from Satan. We are also... We are also uh, born of original sin. You understand? There's not a single person born on this planet that does not have a generational curse attached to them. You, you really have to understand this. There's not one single person born on this earth that does not have a generational curse attached to them. We are all unworthy of salvation from birth, from birth. This is why our path has to lead us to transcend the world. I read another passage today. I believe it was in First Corinthians. You cannot, you can, you cannot eat from God's table and from uh, the devil's table at the same time. So you cannot say that you're of God and still be in the world at the same time. Still chasing name and fame. Still chasing this money stuff. And, and say that you're of God at the same time. It is impossible. It is impossible. That is from the Bible. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So you have this, this, uh, this sinful nature in you until, until you have really transcended the, the world. You have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you have literally turned away from your sinful nature. Until that happens, you're fair game for Satan, and any weakness you have, he will come at you with. So you can't blame God for it. God may allow it to happen, but he's not the one doing it. Understand? So don't blame God for your bad times. Don't blame don't blame God for your bad times. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. 
that after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And you know, you, you, you remember back when all this stuff first started, I said to you, if Signorelli's genuine desire was to help people understand what's going on in the mystics community, what would have stopped all of this right in its tracks? All he would have had to say, or actually say nothing at all. All he would have had to say if he wanted to say something um, was, uh, I need to make a correction to my previous video. I just learned that the third eye is in fact real and it is extremely dangerous. That would have put a stop to everything, but no, he did not go that way. He chose to attack me and so did the others. And as you can see, they're still attacking me. But I will follow what the Lord said. The Lord said, can I be in charge? And he most definitely is in charge. You see, these pastors out here still don't know who's in charge. This is why they're still attacking. So, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. And I want to tell you, I was out here that whole time while they were calling uh, Everett from Vlad's church. I was out here saying, I'm right here. You, do, you want to, uh, do you want to ask me something? Do you want me to elaborate on something? I'm right here. They wouldn't even acknowledge me. They would not even acknowledge me. So I want you to understand how devious and underhanded all of them are. And how they continue to be. But what is happening? What is happening? I am continuously being blessed. That's all I can say. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accepted the world planted in you. The world planted in you. This is all the personhood. This is all the ego. This is all the concepts, the belief systems that we've all grown up with. All your 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 background story, all your trauma that you have not healed yet. And this is why it's still playing out here. Okay. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accepted the world planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do not be a Bible thumper. Bible thumpers are no good for themselves or anyone else. You cannot only listen to the word and repeat the word. You've got to transform your life to shine the word, to exhibit the word, to reproduce the word in how you live and how you treat other people. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious yet do not keep tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Read that again. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, 
and their religion is worthless. Bible thumpers are no good for themselves or anybody else. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. It's everything I've ever said to you guys. You've got to transcend the world. The world is Satan's. And this is where the ego stems from. You've got to transcend the world. Those who chase the world are enemies of the Father. Pure and simple. Those who chase the world are enemies of the Father. That was chapter one. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Here's another good one. This goes to everything I was saying about the mystics community and the, and the, um, and the occult. People coming out of there not to abuse them. They don't deserve to be abused. Okay? My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes and a poor man in filthy clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or you sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? This is exactly what has been playing out here. Every single time these people have called me a witch and a demon, they not only spoke to me that way, but you understand that this is what they feel about every single person who has left or is in the mystics or the occult communities right now. It's what they believe about them. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is, is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong. If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. And none of these pastors have done that at all. Quite the opposite. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as law breakers, as law breakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful, mercy triumphs over judgment. I am going to read this again. This was everything that I have been fighting for out here. This one verse right here is everything that I have been fighting for out here. This is James 2. Verse 13, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful, mercy triumphs over judgment. And do you understand where that word came from that I gave to these pastors? Repent or he will let you experience what is going to happen to you. And they all called me a sorcerer or, or, or whatever the foul name they called me because they said a prophecy has to um, uh, uh, say or relay something that's in the Bible. Well, I've read it two or three times already in the Bible. I've read it two or three times already in the Bible, yet they're still calling me a fortune teller. Uh, um, I can't even think of these horrible words. I can't think of them. A 
For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not commit murder. If you do commit adultery but do not commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith and has no deeds? Can such faith save them? It, it, and here is this. It's not deeds like, like you're going out and performing miracles. And that's what these pastors falsely believe. It's what they kept telling me. What are you doing sitting here in your recliner? And, and, and we're out here in, on the front lines. It's not about showing miracles. This is their delusion and this is their ego and this is the lie of Satan. It's not about doing miracles. It's not about casting out demons or healing people. That's not what it means when it says deeds, faith without deeds. It's not what it means. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. I will show you my faith by my deeds. My faith comes through how I treat other people. my lack of ego, my willingness to accept all, to help all accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, not cherry pick who I want to see come to Christ and, and, and not uh, viciously attack people who are lost. This was my whole message out here. I want you guys to understand this. The Lord is, is, is supporting me at this point and telling me I'm on the right track. Keep going the way I'm going. This is what I was led to while I was waiting for church to start up this morning. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Some early manuscripts? Dead. Dead. Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac to the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. Total submission to God. Total submission to God. And totally living his life by the word. Not just Bible thumping the word. And calling all glory, grace, and power to themselves. It's not what it is. It's not the deeds of showing people that you're able to cast out demons or heal the sick. Or, or This is all these people do. This is all these people do. And they attack people out here. They are not living by God. And this is what I was able to see immediately. Now this other one wants to come out and say what to do when people slander you. I wasn't slandering anybody. I was telling people facts. They were in fact slandering me. You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was created to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, not by faith alone. In the same way, not even Rahab, the prostitute, Consider righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, 
So faith without deeds is dead. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large, they are driven by strong winds. They are steered by very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. And this is exactly what happened here. Because of their egos and the reason, whatever their reason was, that they decided to attack me so viciously the way they did, they were the ones who were exposed. And it was foretold to them through me that if they did not repent, he would let them experience what's coming for them. And I have been raised up and glorified because I have held strong to follow what the Lord said. And literally following what was in the Bible that I didn't even know what was in the Bible. Because I live in that space. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings. Amen, brother. Amen. Who have been made in God's likeness. Who have been made in God's like. Isn't that what I keep saying? When you're fully awake, you understand that everyone is of God. And you have love in your heart. You don't attack people. You don't attack people. Isn't that what I've been saying? Here it is. Out of the same mouth came praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both flesh water and salt water, can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can give salt spring Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility, in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is, is earthly, uninspired, demonic. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is everything I've been saying out here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Descend upon me now, Holy Spirit. You guys, how much more? How many, how many, more, how many more times do I have to show you? How many more times do I have to show you? Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. And this person that put out the video today again says, um, people that attack you when you're called and slander you, it's because they're envious. This is exactly what that tarot demon kept saying about me, that I was jealous of her. This is what this fool is saying about me. And I guess this is what these other pastors are saying about me. And you heard me say emphatically that I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor. 
Let me tell you something. With the way things have been right now, and I know God can change everything in a heartbeat. Um, I'm going where I'm led. God has led me to get back into the church and go through this go through this leadership group that I may lead a small group of people. And Bob Larson gave me the idea because I know it is not a part of this church right now, but I am hoping after time that I can start up a deliverance prayer group there. This is what I'm thinking about doing. In the church, though, I, I don't want to be anybody's pastor. The pastor is the pastor of the church. I'm just a little prayer person there. That's it. That's all I want there. See, because then I can leave when I want to leave. I'm not responsible for, for people's lives. I'm not responsible. For, understand one thing. I've been responsible for people's lives since the day I was born. I was responsible for my sisters as a small child. I was responsible for my mother. I was responsible for everybody. Then I grew up to be a nurse. I was responsible for strangers. Not one person has ever been responsible for me. Do you understand? Now, I don't want any responsibility for anybody else. I want to focus on God. That's it. I want to focus on God. Okay? Excuse me. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. And that is the truth. That is the truth. Except for me, who they're all telling, um, who they all are believing. And believe me, it's projection. It is total projection. Um, they're all accusing me of being envious of them. Yet, for the people who are not out here attacking me, I very happily post their things on my page so that people who see my page will be led to them. Do you understand? So, and I'm always talking about these other people. I always tell people, this is who I'm being fed from. Um, here, um, I, I learned this really awesome thing from Bishop Jakes today, or Prophetess Maddie did, did this wonderful song. I keep listening to it. I have no problem. You see, when, when people are jealous of people or you have that jealous jealousy demon in you, you don't turn, you don't, you don't um, uh, refer people to other people. You want the spotlight yourself. That is exactly what these pastors are doing. They are projecting. They are absolutely projecting. They are projecting. No, this girl right here, I'm referring every single one of you out to the people who have helped me on this path. That's what I'm doing. And I'm also telling you who has hurt me on this path, who you need to stay away from. So if there was a jealous bone in my body, I wouldn't be referring you to anybody. I wouldn't be referring you to anybody. People who I, who I can see the light in, who are, or, or are demonstrating Christ-like behavior and are not out here trying to hurt people just to feed their egos. Or, uh, I call those people as, as pastors from the light. And they are the people that I will refer you to. Because I am not out here to be a pastor. P plain and simple. If I had envy in my body, I would not refer you to anybody. I would not post any other pastor's videos on my page because I would be afraid that somebody would, would be taken away from me and go to them. That's what envy does to people. It is demonic. This is what these people are doing. There's not an envious bone in my body. I have transcended the world. These people have not. This is why they're projecting all their crap onto me. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace, loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, sincere. Bingo. Everything that is evil of, of the world, all of these emotions, all of the, these things like jealousy, uh, hatred, or anger, all of this stuff, um, backstabbing, it all comes from the world. It all comes from the personhood, the ego, from Satan. And this is why I, I tell you, the psychological mind is something that torments us. It is controlled by Satan. Our emotions are things that torment us. 
It is controlled by Satan. When you transcend these things, you find the steady state in the existential reality. You don't have the mind blasting you anymore, the psychological mind. You don't have it blasting you anymore. Uh, you don't have all these emotions flowing through you anymore. You're in a steady state. This is God. This is who you are naturally when God flows through you. It's who you are naturally. You don't have any of these negative things anymore. And for these people to constantly be puking their stuff up on me, um, it, it's ridiculous anymore. I just have to laugh at them. I hope they grow up one day. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And God continuously blesses you. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Do they come from your desires that battle within you? Of course it does. It comes from the personhood. It comes from the psychological mind, the emotions, and the form. The personhood. And it comes from the ego. That's all run by Satan. It's all run by the world. You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. You have not submitted to God. And this is what I've been telling all of them. It's your ego at play here. This is why you're attacking me. You're in a fear mode. Um, you, you, there's the fear of death. There's fear of everything. When you believe you are the form and you believe that you are in charge of your own life, you fully have not surrendered to God. This is where all this fear comes from. This is why all of these malicious attacks came from. Because they have not surrendered to God. None of this had to happen. None of it had to happen. And if they truly were what they preached, none of this would have happened. And, and let me also state this. There is not one of us who is obligated to accept abuse from anybody out here. You do not have to accept abuse from anybody out here, ever. Don't let anybody tell you that because you, you are spiritual, because you're following Christ, because you're, you're in oneness, that, that you're a doormat. And you're just going to let people abuse you. No way, Jose. No way, Jose. It doesn't mean that we will ever go out looking for a fight. And it also means that we want to settle disputes and arguments as quickly as possible. And as calmly a manner as possible. As gently as possible. Um, w without making it get into what this has turned into. There was no need for any of this. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Praise the Lord. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God, means friendship with the world. It means your ego. It means chasing name and fame. It means chasing money. It means chasing uh, lust, your uh, sexual desires. Um, it, it means everything that you've heard me talk about out here. That is of the world. So if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. It's plain and simple. You cannot have both. Cannot have both. And if you try to convince yourself that you can have both, you're a liar. And Satan is your father. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us or that the spirit he caused to dwell in us envies intensely or that the spirit he caused to dwell in us longs jealously but he gives us more grace that is why scripture says god opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble amen submit yourselves then to god resist the devil and he will flee from you come near to god and he will come near to you wash your hands you sinners and purify your hearts you double-minded 
Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Hello. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister, the Greek word for brother or sister, Adelphos, refers to a believer, whether a man or a woman, as part of God's family, or judges them, speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. They are all lawbreakers. They have no right to call themselves pastors. Any one of them. Any one of them. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you who are, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Exactly what I've been saying out here. Who are you to judge your neighbor? Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not even, even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanish. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. Hello. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. And all of these pastors knew that what they were doing was wrong. It, goes, it went against what the Bible taught, went against what God's will was, and they did it anyway because they believe they are God. And now this, this other one is out here saying that I slandered them. I slandered them. No, no, no. I proved by scripture that everything I said was the truth the gospel truth. They have all slandered me. James 5, this is the last chapter. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. You, your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out, crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter or yourselves as in a day of feasting. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who is not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. I can't tell you what feeling just went through me. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. Means do not make a vow, take an oath, do anything like that. A simple yes or no. Anything else is of the world. And this is why all this, these problems happen. It's why, how these demons get in. We've taken a vow of something and we don't even know the demonic consequences of what we're saying. Take no vows. All you need is a simple yes or no. That's it. Is, then, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? 
Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them. Anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Pray. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth, and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. And this is exactly what I was trying to do out here. And they have brutally attacked me. Okay? So the Lord had guided me to see this this morning. And I'm fully blessed. That's all I can say. I'm continuously blessed because I submit, surrender, and do exactly as I'm told. And um, it, it doesn't matter to me what people out there like or don't like. You know, there's a verse in here. I don't know which verse it is. It's a, you should you should not fear the the men out there or the Romans out there that 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 will kill the form. You should fear the one that can kill the form and kill the soul by sending it to hell. That's the only that's the only person you should fear. That is the only person I do fear. And that is the only person that I love. Okay, so this was the 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 chapter in the Bible of James. There's only five chapters in there, so take the, take the Bible out and read it yourselves and see how everything you've just witnessed with these pastors is literally in this, this, these chapters here. It's just amazing to me how the Lord is working in my life, you guys. So I want to tell you once again, if you're in the mystics community, if you're in the occult right now, now is the time to get out. Get out. Because there's a lot of work to be done. You've got to get rid of these demons. You, you've, you've got to change your whole belief system. You, you've, you've got to get your face in the Bible to even know what God's word is. There's a lot of work to be done. Now is the time to get out. So I was blessed again today, not only by being brought to this verse, but literally being connected with everyone in the church, starting leadership classes next week, this week coming up. Um, connected to a group of people my age where we can have luncheons together, uh, have movie night together. Um, it, it's the, the whole world has just opened up for me. That's all I'm saying because I persevered through the hard times and I never chose to go back out into the world. I always chose to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the Lord and never lose faith ever. No matter what happens to me, I've learned this through the dark night of the soul, believe it or not. This is where I learned it, that every bad thing that happens, although it hurts, it's horrible. Nobody likes bad things to happen. No, unless you're, unless you're um, a masochist, you don't like pain. Uh, but understanding that this pain is going to bless you in the end. So you never lose your faith and you never curse God. You never yell at God. You never think you're more than God. And you always submit and surrender. And he will, he will bless you abundantly and continuously pour out his grace on you. There's another verse. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be added unto you. That is, I'm living proof of this. The Bible is truth. It is alive. The Bible is alive. If you live it, if you live it. And I want you to understand that, that you've been seeing all this in me. You saw where I started. You saw where I am now. You see how these people are constantly attacking me. Yet it, it doesn't matter to me. I will defend myself because no one out here has a right to abuse anyone out here. And because I was an abuse victim and because I was abused by people in the occult and, and uh, the mystics community, I am very sensitive and aware to what you people are going through. And this is why I have stood up the way I have stood up. It's not because I'm a saint out here. No, no, no. I'm most definitely a sinner. Repent every single day for always falling short. And it's part of what keeps me humble and what keeps me constantly surrendering to God. 
you have to see yourself, never see yourself as being this wonderful, big, huge person in your own eyes. That's ego. And that comes straight from the devil. You guys have a blessed day.